Hello everyone, I am Esther Romain. I'm a professor at the University of Florida, um, where I am um, a lecturer in European studies. And uh, the topic for this talk is uh, your migration in the European Union. And particularly, I'm going to be talking about um, refugees and the refugee crisis, as it's called, um, which really struck um, the headlines in Europe in 2015, but actually had been going on much longer than that and has been ongoing ever since, even though it has more or less disappeared from the headlines. So, um, refugees are a major um, issue in um, in national and international politics. Um, and um, one of the reasons why it's so prominent in politics is because of the numbers that we're seeing. Um, UNHCR, that's the United Nations um, High Commissioners for Refugees, um, estimated that in 2018, there were 17.8 million people forcibly displaced. Um, and that number uh, divides up in um, 25.9 million refugees and 41 plus three something, 300 million, uh, 41 plus three million internally displaced people. Um, so what we see here is a distinction between refugees and internally displaced people, which is important to remember. Um, Sometimes um, when people talk about refugees, they're not counting internally displaced people uh, because refugees is a term that officially designates uh, only those who are, have been forced out of the country over national borders. Um, of those um, refugees, 20.4 million are under the mandate of the United Nations uh, High Commissioner for Refugees, but basically meaning um, that they are um, administered under the uh, provisions of the United Nations uh, High Commissioner for Refugees. Um, and 3.5 million are asylum seekers. Now, asylum seekers are people who have officially um, registered a demand or an, um, a request actually for, um, for the designation of refugee status. Um, and um, that's a whole different ball game. Um, and I'm going to be talking specifically about that um, 3.5 million is, uh, of asylum seekers, um, because these are the most controversial. Um, the refugees who are under the mandate of the UNHCR um, typically are provided with uh, humanitarian aid but not everybody uh, among those, and the majority of those actually will not um, be um, considered for relocation. Uh, typically, this is the population that lingers on in um, UNHCR or um, NGO administered refugee camps. And typically that is not in, um, in Europe or in the West in general. Um, as I said, the refugee crisis is ongoing. An estimated 13.6 million people were newly displaced due to conflict or persecution in 2018. Um, and that number included 10.8 million people displaced within the border of their own country and 2.8 million new refugees and new asylum seekers. So, as um, what I suggested here actually shows up also on the map, when you look at the map, um, where the majority of the refugees, um, so we're not talking about asylum seekers per se, we're talking about refugees here, where the majority of the refugees are hosted, um, one uh, third of the global refugee population, approximately 6.7 million people, uh, are hosted in what is called the least developed countries. And four out of five of every refugee lives in countries that are neighboring to their countries of origin. 
Um, that also means that um, the overwhelming majority, 86 uh, percent of those who are officially classified as refugees, live in countries um, like Ethiopia, Kenya, Pakistan, Lebanon, and Jordan, which are adjacent to major areas of, of global conflict, um, and that um, don't really have the resources to host um, this, these numbers. Um, but um, that is typically not qualified or classified or labeled as a crisis. Usually the label of a refugee crisis comes into play when um, refugees and the stream of refugees is impacting the global north. Um, and the fact is that until relatively recently, um, because of geographic barriers, um, the global north has relatively being unaffected by massive refugee flows. So the numbers were not as uh, pressing and not as problems as they, uh, in the past as they are now. And that's typical, and that is why in 2015, um, the headlines of major newspapers in the global north were a flush with, um, you know, the, um, the term refugee crisis. Now, when we are talking about the refugee crisis, um, we have to talk about what particularly is that crisis. What is the nature of the crisis? Where is the crisis in the crisis? Is this a crisis of numbers? Well, yes, to some extent, it was definitely a crisis of numbers. Um, and the numbers was about, you know, the one plus million refugees and migrants arriving on European shores um, in the span of one year. There's also um, the, um, the numbers of uh, lives lost at sea during the crossing of the Mediterranean Sea, um, which had become the major route of entry for um, refugees into um, EU territory. Um, estimates, official estimates of uh, numbers lost uh, at sea uh, amount to more than uh, 3,770 deaths. And the unofficial number is much higher, of course, because a lot of um, those who perished at sea have not been retraced. Uh, we're also talking about um, a political crisis because um, in terms of um, the, uh, the shock waves um, that it, this, this refugee crisis in terms of numbers and in terms of deaths um, precipitated in uh, the political um, register. So what that, does that mean? It, um, basically, the refugee crisis laid bare a huge uh, chis schism uh, within the EU itself between constituent EU countries, um, which really culminated very symbolically with uh, border closings, a cascade of border closings, um, con contravening the whole idea of the EU as composed of an internal open market with no borders between member state countries. The other component of the crisis, you could say, is that it exposes like a sort of schizoid balancing act in the, Europe, uh, in the European Union uh, between um, EU's overt commitment uh, that is uh, also registered in its foundational documents um, to humanitarianism um, and then also the fact that um, its humanitarian commitments to refugees um, in, a political, in a political arena don't register very well um, and contravene a deeply rooted um, and uh, increasingly um, acerbic um, distrust of migrants in general um, and refugees in particular. So, um, so why are migrants and particularly refugees then such an intractable, intractable problem? I'm putting this in quotation marks in contemporary politics. 
Um, I think that we can look at um, this from, uh, from the perspective of what is called in um, political theory as the paradox of human rights. And um, that paradox of human rights um, has been summed up by political philosophers such as Hannah Arendt and Giorgio Agamben um, in the statement, and this is an important, very important one, and I'm going to read it out, that um, the refugee who should have been the embodiment of the universal principle of the rights of man is instead deprived of right rights. So what does it actually mean? Um, what this means is that um, the idea of human rights, which is basically um, formulated during the Enlightenment as the idea of that man is invested with inalienable rights, um, such that's why they're called human rights that are universal. Um, and those rights include the rights to um, liberty, freedom, and uh, pursuit of happiness, and the right to life. Um, these universal human rights are only are enshrined, actually, as uh, in the, within the bounded and limited concept, the context of the nation state, as citizenship rights. So it's only within the context of the nation state that universal rights are guaranteed by the institution of citizenship. So um, that means that in principle, refugees would have human rights. In practice, they are specifically not guaranteed because what, what refugees have lost um, to either being um, forced to leave or being deprived of their citizenship um, is that protection that of human rights for which the only political body that is a guarantee is the nation state. So re refugees are in a position, position without um, access to political rights and um, that also in practice means that they are that their human rights are also not guaranteed. The second component that is the complicating factor here is that it's actually this, the prerogative of the sovereign nation state to decide over the conditions of inclusion and exclusion, i.e. the terms of membership of that nation state. So in principle, refugees have access to human rights, but then they can only access those human rights when they are included in the political body of a nation state. And when that nation state, which is their state of nation state of origin, uh, somehow um, precludes um, a refugee from accessing their human rights, um, the only way that they can access guarantee to their human rights is by receiving asylum in another um, nation state. So there is actually a difference between being a refugee and um, being classified as a refugee and um, receiving asylum. And um, asylum basically means, receiving asylum basically means that um, with um, the recognition of, of refugee status comes a guarantee or a promise that uh, the refugee will receive um, access to um, the belonging of another nation state. Um, so um, what we um, um, what we see in practice then is that um, a lot of pressure has um, come to bear on um, that moment in between a refugee sort of registering a claim for asylum, a request to be admitted uh, to a political status of, a, and a process of inclusion within another um, nation state, um, and actually acceding to that request, which is the prerogative, as I said before, of nation states. There is no universal 
body, governing body, that can force nation states to admit a refugee on its territory and accede to that a request for asylum. Um, one of the problems that happened during the context of the of the uh, um, the European refugee crisis is that uh, with the increasing numbers of refugees um, basically washing up on the shores of Italy and uh, Greece, according to the mechanism that the EU has set into in place for um, administering um, requests for asylum, that responsibility falls on the first nation state, the first territory in which a refugee um, is um, basically registering his claim and is put into the system of, um, of asylum requests. That meant that Italy and Greece were facing the possibility of a million um, requests for a refugee status on the basis of what is called the Dublin Courts, which is this principle of first entry um, as where the responsibility of the nation state for administering that claim for or request for asylum has to take place. And uh, when <clears throat> Italy and Greece basically threw in the towel and said, we're not going to deal with a million uh, requests for refugee status, um, and basically opened up their borders <clears throat> for uh, refugees to stream on, um, countries along the line decided to close their borders. And this was also activated by Germany that had in response to um, the crisis indicated that it would receive um, it would receive the requ requests or the asylum seekers um, that were seeking to, asi to uh, asylum in Europe, in Germany. So that Germany would be the house, let's say, of the status of reception. Um, and uh, this basically precipitated a crisis of border closures. Um, refugees um, caught in borders that were suddenly closed along the um, borders between Austria and Hungary, uh, borders between Hungary and um, uh, other neighboring countries, and the entire um, political um, basis on, on which the EU had been um, built, namely the idea of op uh, open borders and the idea of uh, within this, what is called the Schengen zone, um, was um, in, um, in crisis as well. Um, I think I, um, I've given um, some idea of what the complicated factors are um, in, um, in, the, in this, what was called uh, the European um, refugee crisis. Um, there have, of course, since then been political responses um, to this um, that um, try to seek a, a, a solution for really what is an ongoing problem. Um, all those are provisional um, and they basically amount to further shoring up European borders so that asylum seekers don't have access to, to um, that, res that status or that possibility of inclusion into and, and political membership into an into a nation state and um, I'm going to close with this and I hope you found this interesting